one of the first ones came out in the 1960s, right after the news reports about uh, the health of children in Los Angeles uh, came out. And this is one of the first ones. This is a positive crankcase ventilation, PCB. And this handles the blow by gases going into the crankcase of the engine. This is one of the first pollution controls put on the car. Uh, they knew the blow by gases were a problem. Engines up until then were vented straight to the outside air. Uh, an automobile engine had a tube that just came down toward the street. So any mist or any drips or anything might come out just hit the ground where they won't cause any problems. We weren't thinking about groundwater. And we weren't thinking about anything, obviously. We were thinking about getting from point A to point B. We weren't worried about it. You know, pollution was on anyone's radar yet. Rachel Carson had not written Silent Spring yet. You guys have all read Silent Spring? He had none of it yet. Uh, it was a, that was a landmark book on uh, environmental impact on the planet back in the late 1950s. It was uh, early, early work on this. She was truly a pioneer. But blow by gas, that's what gets past the rings, especially when the engine's cold. And the piston's not quite round yet. And blow by gas to get by. The end of the crankcase is vented to the outside air. And so to get around that, that the gas that were then the outside air, the PCB belt uh, was adopted in the early 1960s. I couldn't tell you the exact year. We have something similar to motorcycles, but not exactly like this. This is an actual valve. That's, a, that's an actual one right there. This plugs into usually the, the cam cover or the rocker cover of this sort of overhead valve right at the very top of the engine because that's a straight line shot down at the bottom of the crankcase through the cam chain cavity or through one of the push rod tubes. Uh, that would give you a straight line shot right straight down to the crankcase. So those gases can then come up through that valve. You see the size and shape of it. It's roughly like that. This is a right angle one. They also have them in line. Most of them just sort of plugged into a little rubber grommet. So that just pops into a little rubber grommet up on the very top of the engine. Some of them, the Japanese ones, tend to screw in. You have to screw them in the uh, uh, cam cover instead of the rock cover. The top of the Now the valve itself is a little spring-loaded plunger. It's a two-way valve. It actually has a seal on both sides of this. And it takes venting from the engine. This is where the blow-by gases come up through the rocker cover, through the cam chain. They go over here to the PCB valve, the positive crankcase ventilation valve. When that valve is closed, just to feel an air going into the engine. When the valve is open, these blow-by gases are also going into the engine, where they can be reburned. Most of these blow-by gases are unburned hydrocarbons. The best thing to do with an unburned hydrocarbon is burn it and turn it into carbon dioxide water vapor for the so-called good pollution gases. There's a lot more people in the So that valve was designed to open and close depending on the engine operating conditions. There are certain conditions where you do not want crankcase gases getting into the intake. Obviously at idle, you don't want any gases getting in because at idle, there's so little air and fuel getting in, the slightest bit of foreign material or not quite you know, impure gases getting in, it's gonna cause a serious issue with your idle. So the PCB valve will be closed at idle. You also want it to be somewhat minimized at wide open throttle. At the, the, the wide open throttle, you also need your maximum. In between them, and most pollution controls work this way, in between throttles, in your mid-range positions, that's when your pollution controls are usually functioning. At the mid-range position, you only need 10 horsepower to keep the car going 60 miles, miles an hour. A motorcycle needs about 2 horsepower keep it going 60 miles an hour up the line. So if you have to give it a little bit more throttle to burn this excess crud that's going through there, you probably won't even notice it. I mean, who knows if your hands here or here? You know, just a very slight tweak difference. And that way we can get rid of the, this pollute. It's not really affecting your performance. It's not really affecting your fuel economy at all. You just have to give it a little bit more throttle that way and that takes care of it. When, you, when you're idling, the PCB valve will shut it off. And so that stuff is getting in, you idolize the smoothly. 
a hard acceleration, the vacuum goes the other way. So here's a PCB valve operation. You've got a double plunger, a flat plate here, and a little plunger pin right there. When the uh, engine is idling, you have fairly high vacuum. And so at a fairly high vacuum, like this, at idle, the vacuum is going to pull this plunger shut. This is where it attaches to the crankcase. This is where it attaches to the intake manifold. So that's this part right here. Right here, this, this right hand side of this is attached right here. Go back into the carburetor and into the intake manifold. This side over here is oops, wrong way. The, the left hand side. So at full at, 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 at idle, you have the, you have your maximum vacuum. Uh, some of you have hooked up vacuum gauges to your engines already, and when you rev the engine, you can see the vacuum is relieved. Turn off when you put your hand over the hose of the vacuum, and you move your hand away, the vacuum itself is relieved, so it does not pull it in your as much as it was. So here, the vacuum is not relieved, the throttle plates are closed, you have maximum engine vacuum happening, and it pulls this plunger to seal up against the stump right there. There's a little pin, uh, spring right here, it's a fairly light gauge spring. That compresses and it holds in place. At wide open throttle, when you snap the throttle on, the vacuum is completely relieved. I mean, like, uh, you snap the throttle on some parts, the vacuum goes down to almost zero because you completely removed all the restrictions in the line. When that happens, the spring pushes this puncher the other way and closes it off on the other end. And nothing can get through. At mid range, however, that's the top one. There's a little balance between where that plunger is and that spring tension. And the gases can get around it, get through it. So that's how the PCB works. It works in the mid-range. Wide open throttle is disabled. At idle is disabled. So it's not letting those gases through. And that's when you're going to notice a problem. You notice your performance issues at wide open throttle. You also notice a group of, uh, 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 uneven idle pretty easily. Good PCB in operation. It usually there's a, a source of fresh air going into the crankcase as well. Before it goes to the crankcase ventilation valve. So there'll be filtered air. It has to go through the air filter. You don't want unfiltered air going into your crankcase. Fresh air is going in and helping to flush some of these pollutants out through the PCB valve back into the intake. Uh, the motorcycle has a breather instead. The crankcase usually has a breather tube coming from the top of the rocker box or the uh, cam cover, the very top of the engine, going straight back to the air box. Some of these, the vent tube is actually coming on the crankcase itself, will be attached to a, a liquid separator on top. You ever see the little can shaped thing on the top of the engine, the back side of the engine? The hose coming out of it, that's what that is. It's a liquid separator, and the hose goes up to the air cleaner. So these gases can be burned again. This is not quite as precise as the PCB valve system. And so our idles run a little bit higher to account for that. The uh, automobile may be idling at 700, 650 RPM. We're running at 1100 RPM. Uh, they'll compensate for this. this. And the crank and the blow by gases, which you see being formed right in here. Or put it right back into the engine and sit back into the intake manifold. Here's another view of it. This one here, instead of the uh, blow by gases coming off the top, like this one, they're going off the top. On this one here, they're going to come down below. And this is a liquid separator, so that any oil mist will hit the separator, will drip back down to the engine. Or if it gets past that, it gets going to collect up here and it ends up in this little tube. So if you have seen a tube coming off of your air box or off of the T-fitty with a plug in there, and your owner's manual says once every month or so, take that plug out, bring it in, to be collected in there. A lot of times that tube is just dry. You don't have anything in there. And the gas go through and get burned in the engine. Here's another a graphic view of the, the breeder. This time the breather tube comes off the top end, goes right straight back to the rear box. And 
the separator and filter for the air box. It was ready to Obviously, if you take the air box off, put individual pod filters on, none of this is functioning anymore. You will have to put something like a breather in. You can't plug the breather. If you do, you'll cause excessive pressure in the crankcase. It's got to breathe. But you do have to put a filter on it. The breather, when the pistons are coming down inside the engine, the pressure is supposed to the crankcase, and the blow by gas in the crankcase will be blown out through the breather tube. Hopefully back to the intake where it can be reburned. Put it at the very least out to the outside air. But when the pistons come back up again, they'll be pulling air into the engine, into the crankcase. You want to make sure that's filtered there. You don't want to have just a tube. Not filtered there, that they're going to be pulling dirt from your engine too. And motorcycle engines are down around your knees, a lot of dirt floating around the air. Around there. If you ever rode with your helmet, you can make shield up on the freeway, you get this little sticky sensation, this little bits of sand and dirt hitting you at 70 miles an hour, kind of hurts. Uh, this, this works down around your knees and down around the engine. So your engine will be pulling in a lot of dirt. Dirt is primarily like sandy particles, quartz. Uh, grit, the, 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 the grit's very abrasive, it will go right through metal. So you have to put a filter on there of some kind. But then, of course, you will disable one of your pollution controls and your bike won't pass along, which is a coming feature for you guys. Um, so last I heard, it was going to be 2013, although they may have to bump that farther in the future again. I don't know how far back they're going to have you retrofit your bike. Or make sure that you buy that original equipment. The last I heard was 2000. So if you buy this made after the year 2000, uh, you have to have all your original stock equipment on it. It is passed. I don't know if they're going to be able to adapt it or not. Uh, they, they, they were talking about 2013, but they, I think they're having some issues with uh, getting the infrastructure in place. But it's coming. And they may, if they uh, postpone any more, they may have to make it like, say, 2010 as they come up here. So you guys probably have to haul almost 2010. I don't care. My new motorcycle is 1994. Uh, the old one's 87, so it doesn't affect me at all. Um, although I still have these things uh, on, my, on my bike. All these things are still attached. Now, another uh, thing, the, the crankcase breeze, this was the first one. Now, before I go to finish, let me back up here to automotive crankcase breeders. The automotive the type crank, crankcase breather and the PCB uh, too. The PCB first was put on cars. All the gear heads, all the motor heads were horrified by this. Oh my god, this is the end of performance in motorcycles. It's over. We're not going to be able to do anything from now on. No, the, the government's taken in, cut stepped in, and has taken over a certain parameter of automobile manufacturing. It's all over, basically take the bus because it's not going to be different. Now, that turned out not to be so true. Early 1960s was the dawn of the muscle car. And so with this in place, soon after, we had things like the Camaro, the Hemi Cuda, uh, the Pontiac GTO. I still want one of those. I want one GTO. Uh, the uh, Shelby Mustang. All these things came the Firebird. Um, the uh, Stingray Corvette, all these things came out after this came into place. So, the fact that these function at mid-range, not as wide of a throttle and not at idle, really affect high performance at all. High performance is pretty much high throttle, wide of the throttle positions. So, uh, it didn't affect them at all. It 